For decades, building software followed a simple rule. You control the data, you control the UI. Your backend defines a schema, your frontend expects that schema, everything flows through clean API contracts. It's predictable, it's testable, it works. And then AI entered the picture and that entire model broke. Because when an LLM is generating your responses, you don't control the data anymore. You don't know if you're getting a paragraph, a table, a JSON object, or something completely unexpected. And suddenly, the front end, the thing your users actually see and interact with, becomes a nightmare to build and maintain. So today, I want to break down exactly what changed, why it's such a fundamental shift, and show you an approach called generative UI that I think is going to reshape how we build AI applications. Let's start from the beginning. Let's say you're building an e-commerce platform. You start with your database schema. This is your source of truth. Every product has these exact fields. No surprises. If a field is required, it's required. If it's a number, it's a number. The database enforces it. Now, your backend team builds an API. They query this database and expose it through endpoints. The response shape is defined. It's documented. Maybe you're using open API specs, maybe GraphQL schemas. Either way, there's a contract. This is the crucial piece. Between backend and frontend, you have a contract. Both teams agree on this. The backend promises to return the shape, the frontend expects the shape. If either side breaks the contract, you know immediately. TypeScript errors, failing tests, CI/CD blocks the deployment, and so on and so forth. Now your frontend team builds components and they know exactly what they are working with. Look at this component. It's like a product prop and TypeScript already knows exactly what's inside, image URL, name, price, description, in stock. No guessing, no parsing, no what if this field is missing. You access product.price, you know it's a number. You call two fix two, it works every time. Every layer reinforces the next. Every layer has validation. Every layer is testable in isolation. And this is how we have built software for decades. And it works incredibly well until you put an LLM in the middle. You are building an AI-powered assistant for your e-commerce platform. Users can ask questions like, what products do you have under $50? Or help me find a gift for my dad. Your database hasn't changed. Products still have IDs, names, prices, descriptions. That's still your source of truth. No problem here. Okay, so we are calling an LLM and returning a response. But wait, what's the shape of that response? That's it, a string. But what's actually inside it? Let's ask the same question three times and you'll get three different responses. A paragraph describing products, a markdown bullet list, or maybe a markdown table. Same question, same database, same LLM, three completely different formats. This isn't a bug. The LLM is choosing what it thinks is the best format. Your clean typed validated contract, gone. So you are the front end developer, you need to render this. What do you do? You are building a universal translator between anything that AI might return and something we can render. And it never ends. Every new case, every new response type, every model update that changes output format. More conditionals, more parsing, more edge cases. Every edge case is another if statement. Every model change potentially breaks everything. So what do most teams do? They give up on rich UI. That's why 90% of AI apps look identical. Not because developers are lazy. Because building robust UI for unpredictable LLM outputs is a massive undertaking. The contract is broken. So here's the question. What if the AI didn't just generate content, but generated the interface itself? What if when you asked, show me our sales performance, instead of getting text about sales, you got an actual interactive dashboard, live charts, clickable elements, real-time data visualization. This is called generative UI. And it's a paradigm shift in how we think about AI interfaces. Let me explain the concept simply. In traditional AI apps, the AI generates text. Developers then have to hard code UI for every possible output. Different formats, different scenarios, different edge cases. It doesn't scale. With generative UI, this changes. Instead of returning plain text, the model response goes through a generative UI layer that produces a structured UI schema at runtime, based on user intent and context. Charts for trends, forms for actions, tables for comparisons. The UI isn't fixed anymore. It assembles itself as the model responds. 
generative UI lets AI do the same thing. It's not constrained to words anymore. It can respond with most appropriate interfaces for the task at hand. In fact, Google recently published research calling generative UI, the biggest shift since the advent of graphical user interfaces. Their study found that generated interfaces were strongly preferred by users over standard text output. Now, this is a sponsored video. Thesis reached out because they have built something called C1. And honestly, it's the first implementation of generative UI that I think actually works for production applications. Let me break down how it works technically because I think the architecture is quite clever. Here is how C1 works. User asks a question. What did I spend on last month? The query goes to your backend where your data and logic live. Your backend talks to C1's GenUI API, but sits on top of any LLM, OpenAI, Anthropic, whatever you are using. Here's the key part. Instead of getting back plain text, C1 returns a structured UI specification. Their React SDK takes that spec and renders it as an actual interactive interface. So the user doesn't see your total expense were $5,432. They see this, a card with a number, a beautiful chart breaking it down by category, live, interactive, no extra front-end code. That's the whole flow. Query in, rich UI out. And here is what makes it interesting. The C1 API is a drop-in replacement for OpenAI's API. Same SDK, same methods, but just a different base URL. So if you have built anything with OpenAI, you already know how to use C1. And it streams UI in real time. And this was important to me. Nobody wants to wait for full response before seeing anything. C1 streams the UI components as they are being generated. So users see a progressive buildup of the interface. It feels responsive and fast. This isn't just rendering. These are real React components with real interactivity. Your AI can still handle call functions, query databases, hit APIs, execute actions. The difference is that when your tool returns data, C1 can render that data as appropriate UI instead of dumping it as text. So how do we actually add this to an existing app? You just need to import C1 component from Thesis AI GenUI SDK. That's pretty much it for the basic integration. You can guide what UI gets generated using system prompts with special UI rules. And if you want to go further, you can plug in your own custom React components, apply your design system themes, or integrate with frameworks like Versal AI's SDK or Copilot Kit. AI is ready to do more than generate text. Our interfaces should let it. Generative UI is worth exploring. C1 by Thesis is one way to do that. They've got a free playground where you can see it in action. A quick start command that scaffolds a complete project. It works with GPT-4, Cloud, and other models. And through the link in my description, they are offering up to 5 million tokens free when you sign up, which is pretty generous for testing this out. Thanks for watching, and if you found this useful, subscribe for more technical deep dives and let me know in the comments. Are you building AI applications? And what's your biggest UI challenge? See you in the next one.